Chastity. What does that mean? Um, that would be saving sex until marriage. Waiting till you get married to uh, have sex. Keeping your virginity until uh, you're married and uh, staying celibate as long as possible. To not have sex. Being a virgin. To fight your desires, basically. Reserving yourself for one that God has planned for you. You get to that point you're like, I want to live by this, but I know that this is usually the time that other people think. It's other people's judgments. Also the fact that maybe your current boyfriend wants you to do it. I know some of my friends are like, no, I'm not going to have sex, I'm married. But then there's other ones that are like, sure, I'm going out this weekend and doing it. Um, there's lots of choices involved with it. There's going to be people that are going to try to push you one way or another. And it's it really, when it comes down to it, it's your choice what you're going to do. It's a virtue. Chastity is a virtue. And yes, it does mean saving sex for your future spouse, but it's so much more than that. It's important to be able to respect yourself and others. In fact, Father Ronald Rollheiser writes in the book, The Holy Longing, that chastity is one of the keys to a healthy sexuality. Chastity. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Jess. And I'm Mark. And this, and this, this is, is Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. The teens on the street had different ideas on the meaning of chastity. We'll meet them again later in the show and also meet our studio guest. But first, let's meet our Spotlight guest, Jason Everett. He and his wife, Kristalina, speak internationally to over 100,000 teens each year about chastity. Next, he'll tell us what chastity is and how it's different from abstinence. Let's check it out. Well, abstinence is a real negative word. It just means no sex. And that's all it means. And so it's not very appealing because it's just a negative thing, you know, and, and you could be abstinent for any number of reasons. Maybe because you can't find a date. Okay, well, you're abstinent. Well, that doesn't tell me anything about you. You could be abstinent, you know, because you're dead. You know, all abstinent, all dead people are abstinent. Chastity is a virtue. Now, virtue comes from the Latin virtus, which means manly strength. You know, that it takes character to live out this virtue. And that's why I always say, a man can't be pure unless he has love. Love gives him his courage. And, and you could be technically abstinent while not being chaste like a person who's technically a virgin, but then hooking up and doing things less than sex, or looking at porn, or doing other things. And these aren't pure, but technically they're abstinent. John Paul II said, man cannot live without love. He remains a being that is incomprehensible to himself. His life is senseless unless love is revealed to him and he participates into it. And that's why we as human beings, that's what we want is love. That high school students, they don't want multiple sexual partners. They want to be wanted. They want to be loved. And if we can just teach them how to find true love and distinguish it from lust, you'd be surprised at how eagerly they grab onto it. The high school students, the college students, they're hungry for this message. They're starving. We did a debate at the University of New Orleans. It was myself versus a professor of sexology. Now, don't ask me where he get a degree in that, but he had one. And he and I debated for an hour, hour and a half on safe sex versus purity. And at the end of the debate, they said, if you want to learn more about safe sex and how to promote it, put your name on a sign-up sheet. If you want to learn more about chastity, how to promote that on your college, sign this sheet. And when the debate was over, we went to the sign-up sheets. The safe sex sheet was empty. The chastity sheet was signed front and back with college students who wanted to learn more about chastity. And so they've heard the whole safe sex message. And it promises them everything, and then it gives them nothing. And so the beauty of chastity is it promises you a very difficult path, but it promises you true love in the end. I think chastity would be a more difficult path to choose, but that's because it'll be the most fulfilling in the end. It's definitely true. It isn't easy to choose chastity, but it's something that if you do, you are very rewarded inside and you're very happy with your choice. Let's see how our studio guests feel about this. They are Marie, Megan, Andrew, Jen, John, and Leah. So, how do you guys feel about chastity? I don't think it's so much how like I feel. You know, I think chastity is a great thing, and you know, it's really, I don't know, giving me some um, boundaries that I can set up for myself to use that can help me live my life to the fullest. Yeah, and I really feel it's a lifestyle, not on that it's choosing to live your life with integrity and filling your mind with what God wants you to fill it with in His peace and His word. And I know a lot of times people um, tend to look at restrictions and rules and regulations as something that impedes their freedom, but really what chastity enables you to do by living that virtue um, is just to live the life that God wants you to have to the fullest. It's like having a railing on a balcony. If the railing wasn't there, you'd go off the deep end. 
So by living within the bounds that the church has guided us and God has guided us, um, just keeping sex within marriage and living it according you know, to your state of life, it allows you to fully and freely experience God's love and the love of those he's placed in your life. Yeah, and I agree. Like Chastity, it's not like a big rule book. It's just patience, respect, and reverence. It's a key ingredient to healthy relationships between a man and a woman. Let's go back to the teens on the street and find out what they think is necessary for healthy relationships between a man and a woman. What do you think is necessary for a healthy relationship between a man and a woman? Um, just opening up and letting your inside feelings out and knowing that you can really be with that person forever, you know? It doesn't mean that you have to not live together until you're married. You have to be able to be friends, you have to be able to like, like each other, care for each other, want to be with each other, do things together. Communication. Uh, I think the biggest part of having a healthy relationship is definitely communication. If the line of communication isn't open, then there's nothing that ba but bad things that are going to happen. I mean, signals could be misread. You're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to have a relationship if you can't talk about what goes on between the two of you. Communication, not just relying on sex for in the relationship. Um, open, trustworthy, respectful. Trust, definitely good love. Trust honesty and I think each person should know who they are inside. A healthy relationship is one in which we help one another become our best selves. And it's usually true that healthy relationships bring us closer to those who love us, like God, family, and friends. On the other hand, unhealthy relationships alienate us from those who love us. Getting involved in a sexual relationship outside of marriage is not healthy on many levels. I know, like, I had a friend, she was um, with the guy for a while, and I guess one pressured the other into having sex, and it nearly, it was really tearing them apart after. They weren't ready for it at all, and they were fighting for a couple weeks, and everyone thought they were going to break up. And, you know, in the end, it was almost like a godsend thing. Our school, our Pure Love Club, did a program where the guys gave girls um, white carnations, and on the carnation it said, you're worth waiting for. And it actually ended up saving their relationship, and they, you know, it formed a more healthy relationship for them, a more healthy base, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I can totally relate to that. You know, um, there was a friend of mine who decided, you know what, I think me and my girlfriend, like, we love each other now, and now it's the real moment to, you know, seal the deal, and they went along and had sex, and they both got hurt in the end from it. And you know, the relationship broke up and it just didn't last any longer. And you know, it was really, really upsetting for him, but you know what, it was, it was a good learning experience for him to know that, you know, just because the, you think you love somebody, it's not necessarily the time to take that step. I think that sexually active teens, I think it's more of infatuation than, than love, than, than true love. It's important to remember though, that the church believes sex is a gift from God. And that it's a good and wonderful thing. The idea of chastity was not created to kill the fun, pleasure, or excitement of sex. Rather, it's a virtue that calls us out of the mentality that sex is just something outside of us, something that can be traded for love or power. Many of the young people Jason meets share their stories with him. Next, he shares a story about a young man who regrets getting sexually involved with a girlfriend. He also talks about the power of real, pure love. Let's check it out. Yeah, no, if you, if you told me when I was in high school that I'd end up being a chastity speaker, I would have had a pretty good laugh. You know, in my high school, it was an all-boys high school, about a thousand students, and, you know, any time chastity was brought up, it was just mockery, you know. And, and Monday mornings after the long weekend, no one would come back bragging about having practiced chastity on the previous weekend. You just brag about your sexual conquest. So anyone who was practicing chastity, like I kind of was in high school, I was technically a virgin, but wasn't really living it out. Today, the biggest player at a high school came up to me after the talk, with tears in his eyes. He said, I was practicing chastity, and then I started to sleep with this one girl, and then two years later I found she'd been cheating on me. And he said, after that, I just figured, well, what's the point? I'm just going to get hurt, so I might as well just do it to girls. And so after, ever that, since then, all he's been doing is using one girl after the other. And he said after the talk today, he said he just wants to stop this because he knows he's just destroying women, and he just wants to live a better life. You know, Mother Teresa used to say that love to be real, it must hurt, it must cost, it must empty us of self. And this, to me, is kind of what chastity does. It, it, it does hurt. 
you know, because you want these sexual des to satisfy your desire. John Paul II, and in a beautiful quote, he said, the chaste man and the chaste woman, only the chaste man and the chaste woman are capable of true love. And it sounds like what he's saying that if you're not chaste, you can't love. It's exactly what he's saying. Because if you're not pure of heart, you're using the person as an object for your selfish gratification. But when you're pure, you're truly making a gift of yourself. For love to be real, it must hurt. It must cost something. What does it say to you with respect to chastity? I feel that if you don't really love someone or care for them or you're not willing to give up some of yourself for them, then you're not ready to have a healthy sexual relationship with them. Yeah, and a lot of times when you're talking about chastity, you get into the discussion of lust versus love. And in today's society, I mean, you know, so many of us are constantly looking for instant gratification, and that's what lust says. It's like, well, you know, what, what can I get from you? But love and chastity is just the total opposite. It's not, well, how far is too far, but how much of myself can I save for my future husband or wife? You know, how, how much can I love them? And it just takes the views that our society gives us and turns it on its head. It's just a really radical way to love. Um, I think that, yeah, based off of what Jen said, I think that true love is the real per satisfaction. And as long as you respect your partner, and their ways of life, then I think you'll get along fine and you'll be chast. And I agree, you also have to respect your partner and yourself too to know that you're gonna wait because it's better than being in a lustful relationship, but actually waiting and being in that relationship where you can truly give your entire heart to someone. And where he said that love hurts, it's not so much a physical hurt that the relationship will hurt you, but more of that you're willing to take that time to sacrifice waiting for them because you know that it's better to just wait for them and then you can have that relationship once you're married than to hurt them now. Right, I agree with John. It's not a physical pain. It's a sacrifice of that lust that you feel for a person. No, I was thinking the same thing. It's selflessness, respect. Yeah, I know exactly what you guys are saying. The couple I was talking about earlier, the lust that they felt for each other almost tore apart their really wonderful re relationship. In many respects, lust is the opposite of love. It's a sexual drive that uses others for satisfaction, and it turns people into objects instead of turning others towards love. Less cannot be in control in a pure relationship. Because in a pure relationship, self-control creates an environment in which you can fall in love for the right reasons. Next, Jason tells us why this is. I think a lot of times people look at God as he's like this divine party pooper, that he, he's given us all these hormones and then he tells us not to think about sex. I mean, how cruel could God actually be? You know, here's this awesome gift of sex, now don't think about it. Now here's a thousand times more testosterone in your body than girls have, now be pure. And it's like, how unrealistic could God possibly be? And so we tend to think him as this distant lawgiver who just doesn't really care what's best for us. And we kind of miss out that, that God gives us these laws precisely because he loves us. When you get physical in a relationship, usually it starts to revolve around that. Where the girls especially complain, well I used to have this good relationship with a guy, but now it's all physical. Whenever I go over his house, it's all he wants to do is physical. And the beauty of the pure relationship is it lets you fall in love for the right reasons. And it deepens the intimacy because you're sacrificing for each other. It helps you to have clarity in the relationship. You know why you're in that relationship. When people are sexually involved, they're blinded and they're binded. So they feel so close to this other person, but they can't critically look at the faults of the relationship. I think one of the most major choices is selecting friends. So we have to find friends that support our decision to be pure instead of wearing it down. Other difficult decisions they face, things like pornography, you know, where it used to be if you wanted porn, you had to go find it. You know, now you have to deliberately avoid it because it's coming to you. It's coming to you from the advertisements on the internet, from the email pop-ups, just the billboards. So you've got the porn, you've got the music they listen to, you have the, the talk about oral sex and everything like that. Well, as long as I'm not having sex, technically I'm being good. And so they're just being bombarded from so many different angles. And that's why they kind of need to back away from everything the world shoves in their face. And that's why we need to deepen our own prayer lives so we have the strength to resist this tide. You know, it's true, like Jason said, there's the hormones and then God's lawmaking of, well, here's sex, but you can't have it. And it's definitely a struggle. What are some of the struggles and challenges you guys see in leading a chaste life? Well, like he was saying, um, the media today really, it doesn't promote chastity, a lot of it anyway. And even if we try to avoid it, sometimes it's just right there in our faces anyway. Absolutely, and because of that, it's hard to find friends sometimes that will support you in your decision. 
And I think that could be a struggle if you don't have people who have the same outlook or don't accept your outlook, then you know, it, might, it might make you reevaluate things when you really know there's no need to. I actually went to a retreat and the priest was talking to us about how easily he could just go online and look at pornography. And he was saying that as long as you follow God's ways, follow his commandments, you will lead a chaste life and you'll, you'll be okay. Yeah, actually, going with that, there's a story that my friend told me the other day about uh, John Paul II that I wanted to share. Um, one day, it was uh, somewhere in Europe, John Paul II was coming out to make an appearance and to meet some people and shake their hands. And a protester came by, and he runs up to John Paul II with a Playboy magazine in his hand and opens it to the centerfold and flashes it in front of him. And John Paul II just calmly takes the picture, folds it up, folds up the magazine and hands it back to the man and says, you know what the problem with pornography is? It's not that it shows too much. It's that it shows too little. It doesn't show this girl's parents. It doesn't show her story. It doesn't show why she felt that she had to go sell her body in order to be loved and in order to make money. And so many times our society, you were saying, it just objectifies people and it doesn't show the whole person. You know, sex is considered one of those things. You're not on the in crowd unless you're doing it. And surprisingly, it's actually the opposite. More teenagers are not having sex while the, while the media tells us everybody is, so go for it. And I think that's something we need to keep in mind. And another thing that makes it harder is like the fashion. When I, when, when I go out to buy clothes, especially in the summer, it's very hard to find something that isn't like very revealing or bathing suits. You can't find something that isn't considered sexy and isn't going to make people look at you in a different way. It's important to remember that chastity is a virtue for all of us. Whether we are single, married, young, old, celibate, widowed, or divorced. To be a chaste person, that is, someone who is in tune with their own sexuality and spiritual potential, is not the same as abstinence, which simply means not having sex. Rather, as it states in the book, Theology of the Body for Teens, chastity embraces the responsibility that comes with love rather than running from it. Chastity does seem to be rising in popularity with many of us taking the chastity pledge. Let's see if any of the teens on the street have taken this pledge or know anyone who has. Are there teens that you know who have taken a chastity pledge? There's definitely a lot of people I know that will not have sex until they're married, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I know a few people that live that way. No, I don't know anyone. Yes, my uh, grandmother did. A few of my friends, maybe two. Not really. I can't say that I know any, because just the way things are now in the today's world, it's very hard to um, find anyone, really, that looks to do that sort of thing, because it's, in a way, it's socially frowned upon by a lot of teenagers to maintain your virginity until you're married and in a long-term lasting relationship with somebody. I mean, it's one of those things where, like I said, on television and on the, on the uh, movies, all of that stuff that all promotes sex and sex pre-marriage, everything. My friend, she's a senior right now. Her boyfriend is graduated last year, but they were going out since her sophomore year, his junior year. She's off in college, she's still going out with him. She has come out and said she does not want to have sex until they're married. I think that's something great that they have. Um, a couple friends from school have actually made vows to be chased until they either get married or they meet someone that they fall in love with. And, you know, they're still young and they know that it's hard. Quite a few, actually, and, you know, that's definitely admirable um, because it's not easy, you know? It's, it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, but to say that, you know, they're going to go ahead and wait it out. And I've had plenty of relationships and we haven't had any of that. And it's been fine, because I know there's plenty of people that have waited to have mar sex till they're married. Hence, Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey had not be going out anymore, but you know, for their differences. But they were together for a while, so you can definitely somewhat look to them and something like that. You know, like a lot of teens on the street, uh, a lot of them knew people that have taken chastity pledges or have heard of them at least. And in my high school that I went to, a lot of the, uh, there was a group of guys that would meet every once in a while and just get together and talk and be there to support each other. And they actually had a slogan, make chaste, not haste. And I thought that was really cool because they actually were supporting chastity and it was a real minority because a lot of people don't see it that way. They see it as everyone's doing it when they're really not. My friend for his 16th birthday, 
Um, her father gave her a ring to wear on the ring finger of her left hand until she gets her engagement ring, and it, it was a chastity ring. And I just think it, it's such a great thing, and I practice it. I've never taken a pledge. I've actually never heard of it. But um, I, I think if you're going to go through with it, you fully have to believe it wholeheartedly. I um, completed a True Love Weights program at my church and took a chastity pledge. So I definitely feel it's something that is part of my life. And you know what's great about these chastity pledges is, you know, like when I first did, I was like, you know, this is so cool. I'm going to like hold on to this one forever. But then like, you know, maybe two months later, you're at another one where they give you one. And you can take it more than once and still be like, it'll have a different meaning each time you take it. And you might think about it more than you did the first time you take it, which is also really cool to renew that promise and remember why you took it. Yeah, and to bounce off about the chastity ring um, a bit, I mean, it's just a great symbol, a great reminder. I know um, if I do get married someday, it's something I'd like to work into the wedding ceremony, like taking off my chastity ring and putting on my wedding ring. But um, it's, just, it's just a great reminder and a witness um, of the commitment that you've made. And if people see, oh, wait, are you married? Why is that on your, your ring finger, your left hand? You can share with them a bit about the choices that you've made. There are many different reasons that we choose to be chaste. Let's hear Jason's thought on this. There's a bunch of different reasons why teens choose to be chased. Some it's out of fear. I don't want to get pregnant. You know, some it's, I don't want to get a disease. I don't want to get AIDS. You know, some people, I just don't want to have sex right now. But I'm most encouraged when I meet the teens who get the big picture, that they'll say the reason I'm being chased is because of love. I want to love my future husband, and I understand my virginity is a gift, and I want to give it to him and nobody else. Other people will say, you know, the reason I'm practicing chastity is because I just love God and He asked me to live a certain way and I want to glorify Him with my body. And that's the most beautiful reason where you put God first because our sexual desires are so powerful that to obey God in the realm of sexual morality is a real sign of worship. It shows I love you more than I love my hormones. I remember a Muslim woman was speaking at a school and she said, I am not fruit. And the students are like, what? And she says, I am not fruit. You're not fruit? And she said, yes. She said at the marketplace, the men, they come up, they pick up the fruit. They flick the fruit, they play with it, they put it down if they don't like it, and they just walk on. She says, I'm not fruit. You don't pick me up, you don't play with me. I am for keeps. You take me, you have me for life. You don't even need to be Catholic to understand these deep, deeper principles. A woman deserves great reverence and honor and respect. And every one of us in the world has stuff that we wish we could erase from our past. And I know from having years of pornography, I know what it does to a man's memory and how it trains you to look at girls as just a collection of body parts. It takes, I think, really years of healing to get those images out of your brain. And so for a guy healing from pornography, if he's Catholic, I recommend go to Eucharistic Adoration. Spend time before the Blessed Sacrament. First for me, just looking at the host was like healing my eyes, looking at the sacred for making up for the way that I had looked at girls in such an impure way. Also, devotion to Our Lady, I recommend. If you made big mistakes, go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation and get a new start. Be open with the priest, be honest with the priest, you know, and so don't run from the mercy. Go to the sacraments, find a good spiritual director, and doing those things will really help you to forgive yourself. You know, my wife shared how she lost her virginity in high school and how she went down a really bad path. And she just chose at one point to say, look, I don't want this anymore. What are some other ways that our faith can help us to be chaste? Well, because I go to a Catholic school, I find it easier to share my beliefs so that if you, if you surround yourself with people who believe the same thing you do, it's a lot easier. And I think God really just will give us the strength to avoid temptation and to be chaste. Yeah, and um, a great thing about our faith as Catholics is because we teach mercy and forgiveness. And he mentions his wife, um, Kristalina, and I've heard her talk, I've heard her story. And she made a decision at one point in her life that she wanted to abandon the way she was living and just really make a commitment from that point on to save herself for her future spouse. And you know, through confession and her prayer life and all different things, she was really able to recommit herself. So it's great that you know through the healing of the sacraments and the other members of the church that they can help you find that new beginning and recommit yourself to God. I remember, um, you know, a while back, back when TV was black and white, Fulton Sheen used to give like a talk show and he came on and he was talking about lust and how you know it takes over and how faith can really help you know a girl when she loves a boy it's the whole picture whereas with a boy it's like oh I'm going to focus in on the elbow and love the elbow and you know what's great is that 
the Catholic Church is really being revitalized and how do, how do we combat this message of like signaling in on one thing and loving the whole picture and why should I love the whole picture, which is great. And there's definitely a way to help yourself with being chased is by knowing when to avoid the temptation. And I was on a retreat once and I heard this acronym and uh, the guy used his hand and he said baths. And the five times are bored, angry, tired, hungry, or sad. And that kind of helps you if you just stop and think about it, you're like, well, are any of those things causing me to be tempted right now? Or, and can I avoid it that way? And that way you can really choose to avoid temptation easily. I know um, the couple I was talking about before, they actually uh, went through a ceremony, it's called Born Again Virgin. And um, they read, you know, the Corinthians reading, and it was just a beautiful ceremony. They went through it together. And I think it was really because, you know, the environment that they were in and everything. And it was just a beautiful thing to see, you know, they weren't virgins for real, but they are in their hearts now and in their minds. And that's the thing, it is never too late. Remember to pray for the virtue of chastity. And find friends who agree with you and will support your decisions. Keep dating time out in the open with friends and family in public places. Make a commitment to be your best self, not just physically, but in the gift of your sexuality. And pray that God gives you the patience and courage to know yourself and to focus your real desires toward real, true love. If you would like more information on how to lead a chaste life, contact us through our website. We'll post a link to Jason's site, pureloveclub.com, as well as other sites with information on chastity. Our address is www.realfaithtv.com or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And we'll leave you today with a quote from Jason's Pure Love Club website. A young man named Matt wrote that the reason I chose chastity is summed up in one simple message, the Beatitudes. Jesus tells us that the pure of heart will see God. That alone is enough for me. And for me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.